Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan, where the fun begins. This review covers Grumpy's toy. It's a 1966 Chevy Nova and in 125 scale from AMT, kit number 772. In 66, Chevy made a big styling change to the sheet metal and trim options of the Chevy 2, including a 350 horsepower V8 engine. With its light weight combined with its stronger engine, it made it uh, very popular with drag racers, including Bill Grumpy Jenkins. Now Grumpy, or the Grump, was trained as a mechanical engineer, and he used his talents to build engines. He's considered the father of pro stock. Jenkin built engines were used to win five NHRA Pro Stock Championships. The kit was initially released in uh, 1965 and it's seen many different versions through the years including the latest one here in 2020. There's very little flash and the kit contains 145 parts molded in white chrome and clear with vinyl tires, a metal rear axle and water slide decals. It's a three-in-one kit. You can build it stock, drag, or custom. And when you're done, it's seven and a quarter inches long, two and three quarter inches wide, and two and a half inches high. Oh, say, that's Newt. Uh, sounds like he wants in. He's uh, raising his hand like he's got a question. Uh, what's up, Newt? Hey, those red stripes remind me of the ones that they painted on the D-Day invasion planes. What do they mean? Well, initially, I think they were made to uh, strike fear in the hearts of would-be racers who went up against any of uh, Grumpy's toys, but um, I think they were basically just for attention-getting uh, and had nothing to do with an invasion of any sort. So why did they call the owner Grumpy? Well, I think it comes from the reputation that uh, Bill Jenkins, otherwise known as Grumpy, uh, or the Grump, basically had a no-nonsense uh, approach when he was on the track. Uh, it's said that he was he's pretty easy going off the track, but when he got to uh, race time, uh, it was all business. Here are the kit's contents. As you can see, they're uh, nicely molded into separate trees, and uh, it also includes a miniature display box uh, that AMT was putting out there for a while. Now we'll be mostly using um, lightweight uh, types of glues, thin glues, uh, like uh, you know the very the thin type of cements. Also sometimes uh, super glue and white glue for um, the window pieces. But remember to heed the warnings of the uh, manufacturers when you use any of the products that you see or hear used in the review. Here are the decals for the kit. As you can see the colors are great and the register is really very good. Um, you'll want to use some setting solution though for some of the larger ones. We'll start with the engine halves, the cylinder heads, the oil pan, and the front cover. Um, and that has the water pump already attached. Uh, so we're going to put those together and, you know, take care of any seams as they come up. Next, we'll gather the valve covers, starter, belt assembly, alternator, and fan. Now scrape off the chrome from any pieces uh, that you want to glue together. And there are two options available for the valve covers, either chrome or uh, racing type or stock valve covers. There's a couple of options for your uh, intake manifold um, including a high rise intake uh, and then you also have the option of dual carbs and a shorter one. And give that carb a goldish tint too. Now the engine got painted Chevy engine orange and the transmission was silver. The belt assembly and the fan were painted black as well as the starter. Now gather these parts up to finish the engine, but don't attach the headers yet. There are also two options for the exhaust manifolds, um, stock exhaust or headers, and the stock manifolds can be attached to the engine before you glue it into the chassis, but we'll hold off on the headers. There are also two options for the air cleaner assembly depending on the intake manifold you choose. The dual velocity stacks with air cleaners or the single velocity stack with a chrome air cleaner are available. And so here's what your completed uh, engine assembly will look like, uh, minus the uh, headers, if you use those, uh, with the fan, the pulley, and the alternator ready uh, to be attached to the chassis. 
We'll also give you some other views here. This uh, one from the back end, looking forward, will show you the positioning of some of the pieces on top of the manifold, etc., and where the alternator is located off the left side. Also, we've got uh, right side here. You can see the starter in position more clearly, and uh, from the other side, the driver's side, uh, that as well. Now you can uh, get these parts out to begin assembling the chassis. And I painted the main chassis, inner fenders, transmission cross brace, the upper control arms, and springs a semi-gloss black, and set the firewall aside to paint it with the body parts. I also note that on the underside of the uh, chassis pan, uh, the white arrows indicate uh, some script work that's molded onto the chassis, and you can sand those off uh, if you choose and smooth those over. So here you see we've painted the chassis uh, with the inner fenders glued into place and this was sprayed uh, with a little semi-gloss black. Uh, there are some locator points here, little tabs that uh, locate the inner fenders. So uh, you see those with little hash marks, you'll put the inner fenders up against those. Now the, um, the springs are painted semi-gloss black, but they've got some chrome silver uh, dry brushed onto the exterior to emulate the springs, and then glue those uh, onto the chassis with the control arms to keep them in place. Now we can uh, gather up the engine, the headers, and the uh, engine compartment components and get those ready to glue into the chassis after painting. Uh, remember, you have to scrape the paint too before the glue will adhere. Uh, once again, to make it easy for you, um, you're going to set that uh, chassis into the body and uh, glue it up against those uh, locating uh, pegs on the side of the uh, underside of the hood. And now you can see here the uh, engine and the underhood components are installed into the chassis. The battery is a semi-gloss black with white caps and silver terminals. The brake booster canister is aluminum with a steel cylinder. And then the washer bottle got painted white with a green bottom and a black a cap on top. The oil filter is gloss black and the headers are steel color. Now the instructions said to set the headers in the chassis before uh, with the engine and then glue it in. But I thought it was easier to scrape the paint off of the mating surfaces and glue the engine to the chassis and then slide the headers in from the bottom and attach them and align them with some gel type glue. The radiator and the radiator support are semi-gloss black and the upper shock mounts are the same with aluminum posts. The radiator hose is flat black and they were all attached to the uh, chassis assembly. The instructions are a little bit vague on which direction the radiator support should be attached. So mine ended up being installed backwards, which gave me a little trouble when I attached the front grill to the body. So make sure to attach the radiator to the support on the side that protrudes outward. Or be prepared to sand off a little bit of material <laughs> to get uh, from the back of the grill later for a fit. And now there are two options for exhaust pipes. Stock with mufflers or side pipes. I went with the side pipes and painted them gunmetal. After the side pipes had dried, I glued them to the headers and the chassis. And next, we'll gather the parts for the rear of the chassis. The rear differential and the leaf springs, they were painted semi-gloss black. And I painted the drive shaft to gunmetal and the traction bar is yellow and the shocks are white. And here you can see in finished photos uh, how they're attached and how the uh, contrast in colors gives it a visually appealing, um, you know, subject matter uh, for the underside of car. Uh, even though it's just the underside of a chassis, you can still um, highlight things to make them stand out. Now we turn our attention to the front suspension and parts and they were painted semi-gloss black with some silver and brass accents. Uh, you can see them there on the linkages and it then attached to the uh, chassis assembly. And don't forget to scrape the glue off of those tiny little glue points. Um, they still need to be clear so they'll, they'll adhere. And here's the completed front uh, suspension. The instructions say not to glue the steering knuckles for posable steering, which you can do, but I prefer mine straight ahead and glued them into place. The tie rods are a semi-gloss black and the sway bar is a steel color. The kit comes with six tires. Uh, there's four stock size tires and then two larger slicks for the back end. There are three options for wheels um, included in the kit, uh, a set of stock SS wheels and a set of chrome Kragers uh, and also a set of steelies. Now I decided to go with the steelies to match some of the photos of the real car I found on the internet. I painted them silver and used some panel line accent for uh, a little 
a decal or detail character there to draw those out. So here are the pieces you'll need, and uh, I painted the uh, the wheel backs, uh, you know, a flat black, and uh, then I sanded the tread area on the tires to give them a little, uh, you know, worn look. And then of course you just uh, uh, sandwich the tire uh, in between the inner and outer wheels and assemble all four and let them dry. So I used the uh, rear slicks for my kit and what you do of course is take the metal axle and use some thin super glue uh, and glue it into one end, seat it all the way in and then uh, you slide it through the axle tube and then attach the other wheel and squeeze, squeeze them together until they stop uh, and that should give you the proper uh, uh, location. Now the rear slicks that are provided are almost too big for the car and they don't leave much room if you want the wheels to turn. You could give them a little room uh, by putting some strip stock blocks between the spring mounts and the frame and, and that should um, you know lower the wheel assembly uh, and raise the body assembly off of them a little bit to add some space there. And uh, you can, of course, glue the front wheel and tire assemblies uh, to the front suspension spindles uh, to complete the chassis. So uh, gather up these parts. Uh, we'll start working on the interior and prepare them for paint by cleaning up any sprue attachment points or uh, ejector pin marks as you choose. Now I painted the interior with some Krylon Banner Red and I used a chrome pen and panel line accent for some of the details. The dash was painted red and black with some silver and chrome detailing. There are two options for the front seat included with this kit. Uh, a bench seat or a pair of bucket seats. There are even two options for the rear seat. Either a stock or a custom rear seat. Once your components have dried, um, they all assemble very easily into positions you'd normally find them in your uh, interior. You see the front and rear seats attached there, and the console goes uh, in the center, of course, and the dash steering wheel combination. Uh, they fit right into locations in the interior. Now, we're going to do some highlighting here, of course. The uh, steering wheel and the column uh, are a little bit lighter red. That's Tester's uh, 1103, because it always seems to me the color never actually matches the interior. To give that a little more realism, I painted them separate. Now the horn rim, the steering rim, uh, and uh, some of the uh, handles, door handles, etc. have chrome pen accents as well. The body does have some parting lines. You see them outlined here uh, with a black sharpie. They come across uh, the pillar areas and then along the fender lines, etc. and then down the front, around the headlight bezels. So trim those off with a uh, hobby knife and sand sticks. The hood has a cutout indentation on the underside for an optional hood scoop and um, that can easily be removed with the back of a hobby blade just to keep going over it till she comes out then sand it smooth. Um, but I elected uh, not to use the hood scoop because um, I, um, I decided I just didn't want the uh, indentation for the cutout there. So I filled it with putty and sanded it before priming which may, uh, may have been something that I should have reconsidered after I got it all together. I primed the body with Duplicolor Light Gray uh, Primer and then painted uh, it uh, two-tone using MCW finishes. Uh, those are lacquer paints, both 6513 in Regal Red and the 6002 Ermine White. And after the white head cured, uh, I taped off the portions I wanted to keep white and sprayed the red on the lower half. After the, uh, the paint was dry, thoroughly dry, I applied the decals included in the kit using plenty of warm water and some decal setting solution for those big stripes. Um, now the rest of the decals basically went on perfectly and probably didn't even need setting so solution to apply them. Next I applied the window decals before installing the windows into the body. The side windows are listed as optional in the instructions uh, but I did not use those. After I glued the um, clear parts into the body with some white glue, the interior assembly was then attached to the body uh, with some super glue and uh, a little bit of liquid plastic cement. Um, locate your uh, mounting points and glue that into place. While test fitting um, 
and looking for glue points for the uh, the chassis to the body I noticed that the rear slicks were basically being pinched by the body so I had to sand off remove quite a bit of material around the wheel openings there inside to give them clearance the time to gather up the chrome parts now for the uh, rear and sides and we'll attach those next remember you have to scrape off the chrome for glue to stick the rear bumper uh, trunk panel and the tail lights are attached to the body and the tail lights were painted with some clear red and a silver sharpie for the reverse lights we'll turn our attention now to the front end and attach the front grille hood and hood hinges and I used some panel line accent to fill in the grill and painted the turn signals uh, with some clear amber I glued in the headlights with some white glue and painted the hood hinges aluminum and black and then the hood scoop parts weren't used but I, I thought I didn't show them in the um, photo here because it turns out I probably should have there's a couple of grill indents um, that probably are open on the real car but I painted those flat blacks uh, to emulate the um, the real indents here you can see the uh, hood hinges are um, mounted to the inner fenders I decided to make the hood hinges and the hood static and open uh, for an open hood look so the engine was exposed now the instructions say you know not to glue that uh, but I couldn't get the hood to rest on the hinges and close um, but there are a couple of places uh, you see the red lines here th that would uh, allow to remove some of the stack up for the um, you know the carbs etc uh, to give you a little more uh, clearance to get that hood closed the other option of course is to open up that uh, hood and then put a hood scoop over the top to expose uh, the air cleaners just a little bit above the hood line not only is this kit packed with uh, options for a three-in-one kit but it also gives you some goodies too uh, here you see the basics for a stripped down engine and an engine stand that you can put together uh, as a companion to your race car uh, and it also comes with the um, uh, mini box uh, that's available in some of the AMT kit series uh, uh, to you know uh, display with your model and wow as you've probably guessed um, with all of the options that were available you're going to have a lot of pieces left to uh, put into your uh, parts boxes and stash well there you have it your model is complete and uh, this is a, a nice uh, display for your shelf uh, it's a real head turner it's it's visually appealing with the uh, red and white and um, you know with that huge engine uh, displayed like this um, it's really nice now this pretty much approximates grumpy's toy and um, it was it was an outstanding race car at the time uh, and it's also an outstanding model kit right now uh, and speaking of which it comes with all kinds of uh, uh, parts options you can make a nice um, actually a nice uh, stock car with this kit but um, as a race car with a little stance on it and some work um, she she can really stand out uh, so if I were you I'd buy one and put it on my shelf well we hope you like this step-by-step -step premium model kit review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel you can do that by clicking on the icon in the lower right of any of our reviews or you can find us on Facebook or our website right on replicas.com thanks